Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of how to make a platformer game in Unity. So last time, we made it so our player can move left and right and jump. But now, we gotta make it so these obstacles that we have created actually work like obstacles. And another thing, I wanna make it so when you fall down, once you reach a certain point, you get reset back to your starting position. So let's begin with that. So to modify our, or to make it so you can warp back to your starting position when you fall down, is pretty simple. What we need is to use an if statement. If statement that accesses the transform dot position dot y checks if it's below whatever threshold we want. For this case, I want to say negative nine. So if it's less than negative nine, we want to make it so our game object gets warped to your start position. So what we want is vector2 start actually I want to access this in the start function so here I'm gonna say vector2 start start.x equals uh, this dot transform uh, position dot x start dot y equals this dot transform Opposition dot y. Now, if you don't know what the start function does, it runs this loop once when you start the game. So when you press this arrow, or when you, yeah, or when you load this scene. And now, and what this is going to do is make it so whatever values, wherever you start, is stored into a variable and now we're going to access that variable later on in our script so what I want to do is make this vector2 variable static static vector2 start and now I'm gonna scroll all the way down here and say this dot transform dot position equals a new vector2 of start dot x comma start dot y. So now let's go into Unity and test if that code works. See, I fall down and I get resetted. So now that we have our falling working, we need to make it so our player can collide with these obstacles. So these spikes are meant to be stationary, so I'm going to start with them because they are the simplest. So what I'm going to do is attach a box collider around these, and I want to tag it. I want the game to know, because the thing about tags is that you can use them in order to make it... The reason we're using tags is because you can use them to make it so the game has special properties when they collide with this certain object. And that's just one, the main thing we're going to use tags for. So I'm going to create a tag for obstacle. And what I can do is name this, tag this with obstacle. So every time you run into these spikes, you will be forced back to your position. And now, so now we have to code the game so it knows what to do when it runs into a spike. And what I need to have happen is use another function very similar to on, on trigger enter, but this time on collision enter. And what this does is check if you collided with anything. And this is going to apply to our circular collider and not just our box collider. And now 
I'm going to go send this game object back to the start. Just to test that it's working. Well, that's wrong. Oh, there was a script error. Needs to be of type collision 2D. Ah. So yeah, just be sure to check your um debug panel. Okay, this is a problem. Now it doesn't know what is supposed to be hit. Because I want it so when your obstacle tag gets hit. So I'm going to add the bit of code. If col, because this is the name of the function right here, dot collider. Um, we're going to say on if pull dot game object dot tag equals equals obstacle. And then we're going to do whatever this is. That should fix our problem. All right. And now we got warped back. So then we can do the same thing for this obstacle. So now it gets warped back. Oh, right. I forgot to tag it. So yeah, be sure to tag all your obstacles as obstacle, so your game knows when something's an obstacle or not. So now, I now I'd like to spend some time tweaking our collisions because, as you saw before, like if I were to do this, I jump a bit. I don't really want that to happen. Then there's an interesting thing where you get warped back instantly. I'd like the game to pause for a quick second before bringing you back. And I need to see... Yeah. So, the way I'm going to fix these um, platforms is by switching this out with a box collider. Because I want all edges to be able to be collided with. Now there's this problem where I get to stick with the sides. So there are several ways of going about fixing that whole sticking with the sides issue. And the easiest way I found is to create a physics 2D material. We go into project, right click, create, um, Physics 2D material. We're just going to name this our platform. And we want to set our friction to zero. And you can click and drag it to your platforms in order to attach it. Now, as you can see, oh, I switched out the platform. So now it slides through. Just to demonstrate it again. So now I can touch the platforms from all sides, I can get resetted, and I can collide with these obstacles. Now there's one more thing that I still need to do before we can really start making the levels. I need to make it so the camera can pan through the map at the same speed as the player is moving. The easiest way to do this is just to make your camera a child of your object. And now it pans, but you don't get the same sense of moving. It feels like your environment is moving around you. So what we're going to do in the next episode is create a script that allows the camera to move independently of the player, but still just keep the player as a focal point and just move around the scene. That way we can create bigger levels when we actually get into level design. Thank you. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Goodbye.